Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Moving On Up on Football Manager 2017. Now you may have realised that I didn't put out a video last week and that is my bad. I've had some technical issues as well as some personal issues to deal with and um, everything's fine now. But to make up for the fact that I haven't uploaded as regularly as I would like, this week is going to be a, a daily upload week. So every single day this week I'm going to there's going to be a video on my channel and all of them will be I believe yeah, all of them will be the um this series. So I hope you're excited about that. So make sure to check out my channel every single day this week for a new episode of Moving On Up. But without any further ado, let's get into today's episode. So Last episode, we obviously beat Carabag 4-0 in the Europa League and Marseille, we drew with 2-2 in the league. Since then, we've played a few games. I was, I'll start off with this, I was meant to come back for the Coupe de la Ligue game. However, the technical issues, I've recorded it and it's just it all messed up. So um, we're back for the, the Bordeaux and Coupe de France game. So since last episode, we've beaten Stade de Rems 1-0. We've beaten Bastia 2-1, drawn 2-2 with Schalke in the Europa League in our final group game, so we finished second in the group. We've beaten EA Grignon 3-1, just defeated Montpellier 1-0 in the Coupe de la Ligue fourth round, so a successful first match in our, the defence of our title. And then we've just had an unfortunate 2-1 defeat against Paris Saint-Germain. Um, we did get back into the game, we did play pretty well, we had a few chances, but... You know, they just had too much quality for us. Morata and Coutinho, the two goal scorers, just tells you everything about their squad, to be honest. So this is what the league table currently looks like. We do have Bordeaux in the league in our first match of today's episode. We're currently in fourth, level on points with Olympique Lyonnais, who have a slightly better goal difference. We are six points behind second place Marseille and 13 points behind Paris Saint-Germain. They... They are just running away with the league, to be honest. And Bordeaux, who are opponents today, they're sitting in 14th, 23 points. They've only won five games all season, eight draws, six defeats. Hopefully we can get back to winning ways against them in the league. So this is the lineup that we're going with for the game against Bordeaux. We have Cardinal in goal, as always. Our back four is Andrea Boscagli, Tiara Kurzweil and Cunningham. Cyprien in defence midfield. Rafa Traniana and Toral in centre midfield. Remy Walter is actually suspended for this match. Pierre Smelu is injured. Um, Clayton's injured. We've just got a lot of our, our better players injured at the moment, which isn't the best, but hopefully we've got enough quality in the squad to get the victory today. Juan Carlos is the shadow striker attacking centre midfield. Djordjevic and Yuan are our two strikers. Playing with push higher up, get stuck in. As always, mentality of control. Let's try and get back to winning ways against Bordeaux. So Bordeaux are playing a 4-2-3-1 defence midfield wide formation, which means there's a lot of space in the centre of the field. You can see from the formation picture, I guess, that there's just so much space in this area. So hopefully our, our centre midfielders can make the most of that today. Just looking at the lineup and Bordeaux, we've got this guy, Malcolm. Now, I remember from a foot manager a couple of years ago, I think it was, um, one of my friends had him in their team and he was pretty unreal. And some of his attributes here makes me think that he is pretty unreal once again in this year's game. So far this season, he's, he's not managed any goals, he's got two assists, but he's got a good average rating. Um, and like I said, some good attributes. I might actually... We've already scouted him. We can't currently afford him. He's... Um, I would like to get him in, actually. Definitely one for the future. Morale's not looking too bad at the moment. It's very good and fairly good. So no superbs, though, which is a, a bit annoying. I'd like to have a few of those. So it's just trying to get the morale up to as high as possible by saying I've got faith, as I always do. Um, Cardinal's looking in good morale. So is Djurjevic. Uh, lot, lots of people listening keenly. No negative reactions to that team talk. So hopefully that means the game's going to go well. So Bordeaux get the game underway. They are obviously playing in their blue kit. We are playing in our away white kit, which will hopefully prove to be a lucky kit for us today as we have a chance for this free kick. Juan Carlos whips it in. It's headed away by Jordan Lukaku. Is he related to Romelu? Cyprien with the ball in midfield plays it back to Andrea. We're just trying to build this move back up after it broke down. Juan Carlos to Djurjevic. Back to John Toral, who's not got very good sharpness today which is something I'll have to look at. But Djurjevic with the ball now. Nice little flick back to Rafa Traniana. Juan Carlos, through ball to Djurjevic. Djurjevic shoots and it's 1-0. After three minutes, Juris Djurjevic with his 10th goal of the season. Double figures for him so far this season. Excellent finish. A, a brilliantly worked move. Just lovely passing play. 
just working the ball well and Djurjevic finally gets it. He started here, with, gives it to Rafa Traniano. Juan Carlos gives it back to him and was it ever in doubt? Left-footed, slotted finish into the bottom right-hand corner of the goal and he has been one of our best signings. Another free kick, Cyprian. He can score from here. We know this. He shoots it. It's a good save from Bernardoni. It was straight at him, to be honest. So the only thing that could have troubled him was the power. But goalkeeper seemed to handle it well. And highlight seems to be continuing. El Yunusi, they're getting us on the counter-attack. Musa Sissoko, former Newcastle player, whips it in back post. Malcolm's there. The man that I said was very good at the beginning of the game has proven to be. Although that is his first goal of the season, it's just because I've given him praise, I guess, that he scored. But... It's 1-1, Bordeaux level, Sissoko whips the ball into the back post, Malcolm's there for an easy tap-in. He made it look difficult though, he hit that straight at the keeper. Unfortunately, Cardinal couldn't keep the ball out of the net. Another chance possibly for Bordeaux now, Malcolm throws it to Tulalan. Now it's Varda to El Yunusi, out wide to Valerie. Uh, Valerie crosses it, Sissoko gets the ball, Sissoko saved by Cardinal. Thank God for that. Okay, so half-time. We are on top in possession. We've had a lot more shots than them, but we just seem to be letting them get back into the game come the end of that first half there. So we, we need to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, they are playing well. Um, keep going. You can still win this one. Uh, I'm not too concerned about John Terrell now. His sharpness is going up. Performance-wise, Ellie Yuan and Boscagli are having a bit of a stinker today. Who have we got on the... We've got Paul and Puel on the bench. We could bring on for Eli Yuan. I think we're going to do that, actually. So Puel coming on for Yuan. Um, we've also got options for taking Boscagli. I've got Dante and the Marchand on the bench. But we'll, we'll leave it as, as is for now. And hopefully we can make our domination pay in this second half. Okay, about 70 minutes gone and we're still 1-1. I think we need a, a bit of a shake up in the attacking area once again so Juan Carlos is going to make way for Hatem Ben Arfa hopefully he can drive us on to get that second and hopefully winning goal okay possible chance for Bordeaux we're into stoppage time Malcolm flicks the ball on Boscagli should get that and he passes it back to Cardinal who launches the ball forward towards Puel but it's going to fall to Lukaku heads that towards Sice this is the first chance of the second half and we're into stoppage time Roland with the ball surely Bordeaux are not going to equal get the winner not equalise Sissoko crosses it in Malcolm how did he how did he miss that Cardinal with an excellent save but Malcolm hits the ball straight at him once again and we have the ball on the attack now hopefully we're going to launch a counter attack Puel Moving forward with it, plays it out wide to Andrea. I don't think this is going to come to anything. Hopefully it does. Puel with the ball to Ben Arfa, the substitute through to Djurjevic. Rafa Traniana out wide to Cunningham. Can he cross it in? Cunningham does cross it in, straight across the face of goal. There's no one in there. And Palwar just managed to get it cleared. We've got a corner. Piling on the pressure with about 15 seconds left. Ben Arfa crosses it in and it doesn't get past the first man, and I feel like this is going to end 1-1. Ben Arfa's still got it, there's five seconds left. We need to get this back into the box, but that's not what we're doing. Cunningham launches it, but it's too late, and it's 1-1 here between Bordeaux and Nice. Two points dropped, I would say, looking at the stats in this one. Look at that, 16 shots, only five on target though. That is where we went wrong today. 59% possession. Ah, uh, it's 85% pass completion as well. It's, I'm I'm very impressed with that, but we need to start being more... What's the word? We need to take our chances better. More clinical, that's the word I was looking for. We need to be more clinical. But saying that, I'm going to say unlucky, because they were unlucky. They did have the, the lion's share of the game, and we're unfortunate not to get the victory today. Juris Djurjevic getting the player of the match award on the 8.5, rating one goal for him. His 10th goal of the season. He's just been an excellent find for me. So that result... Now, strangely, let's have a look at this league table. So Leon got beat by St Etienne. And Monaco won 3-1. So we have stayed in fourth. But the team above us and the team below us have swapped places. Which is, is very interesting. I mean, we're level on points with Monaco, who are in third. We just have a, a worse goal difference. And to be fair, I think I'm going to say this now... The league winning the league title is probably off the cards. Fifty four points Paris Saint Germain. That's fifteen points more than us. I don't think that's going to happen. Juris Djurjevic has been named the Serbian FA's Player of the Year, and in my opinion, it's 
well deserved. He's scored 18 goals in 49 games with an average rating of 7.29. 15 assists as well. He is just, he is, he's got to be Serbia's best player, to be honest. And he deserves that award completely. So I'm still just advancing on to the next match. I didn't realise that there was a, a bit of a, a break between the Bordeaux game and the, the Cup game. But some big news on the 1st of January. Dante has announced that he wants to retire on the 30th of June this year. Um, I do have the option to ask him to reconsider, but I'm not going to do that because he's like 36 years old and it's about time, to be honest. It's the second day of the January transfer window and we have completed a transfer. Leonardo Bertoni, we have signed him from Young Boys and he is a defensive midfielder or central midfielder. I just felt like with injuries and suspensions, we're lacking a little bit in the central midfield department. And also it's just handier to have a another cover for defensive midfield. Um, there has been news articles just recently saying that Wyland Cyprian may be wanting to leave to go to Wolfsburg. So if that was the case, then it's it's a good job that we've brought this cover in. But you can see his attributes, the key ones for defensive midfielder, marking, passing, tackling, all, all very, very good. His determination is a little bit low, but he is 24, so that doesn't really matter. Um, strength again, a little bit low, eight. He's got good stamina, quite aggressive, good work rate. He looks like a pretty good player. Um, we signed him for, how much did we sign him for again? 1.3 million from young boys. He's been there all his life, practically. Um, best season was last season, 6.92 average rating. Um, I'm probably going to play him in the cup game so we can see how he does in his debut. So we've been forced into a couple of changes, well, forced into one change, actually, for this game in the cup against Le Puy Foot 43. Kraft comes in for Ewan Andrew, who was suspended for this game. The new signing, Leonardo Batone, moves into defensive midfield in place of Rafa Charniana as Cyprian gets pushed up to centre of midfield. But other than that, we've got our full strength lineup out there. And I figured there's 10 games, 10 days, sorry, until our next game, which is the quarterfinal of the Coupe de la Ligue. So I might as well play my full strength lineup and try to smash Le Puy Foot. So that is what we're going to try and do. So Le Puy Foot get this game underway and in all honesty this should just be a walkover for us. Le Puy Foot are an amateur team I believe. I believe they're in the, the amateur league of French football, the CFA2. Um, they've only placed placed they've only faced regional league opponents so far in the competition this season. So we are their toughest challenge yet. Uh, we might have a chance here. Walter plays to Cyprien, who's been a bit further forward than he's used to, but he gives it to Juan Carlos. Now through to Walter! That's the first one. 1-0 one after three and a half minutes. Remy Walter with his sixth goal of the season. He comes back from his suspension and grabs the first goal of the game. Cyprien with a nice pass to Juan Carlos. Then a through ball from him. Looked a bit wayward, but Walter just sprinted onto that and smashed it into the post and then into the back of the net. Kraft with a throw in on this right-hand side. Gives it to Cyprien. Cyprien plays that across to Walter. Plays it forward to Juan Carlos. Now Djurjevic! And that was just a beautiful passing move. Excellent first touch pass in there. And finished off by Juris Djurjevic with his 11th goal of the season. I did say this might be a bit of a goal fest. Cyprian had it. Passed it across to Walter. Played a first time to Juan Carlos. He played a first time to Djurjevic. Who then smashed that first time into the back of the net. To make it 2-0 after 11 minutes. Corner now. Juan Carlos to take it. Crosses it in. Back post. Walter's there. And it. I think it was Walter that headed it. Clavel saved it. The first save of the game of, that I've seen anyway. That's a massive kick. <laughs> Kraft heads that back to Cyprian. Cyprian takes on this man down this right-hand side. Crosses it in. Juan Carlos is there. And there's the third goal. Juan Carlos with his fourth goal of the season. Let's try and get everyone on the score sheet apart from the goalkeeper. Come on. Maybe even the goalkeeper. We'll see what happens. Am I being a bit too cocky? I don't think they've got a chance of getting back into this. I certainly wouldn't be saying this if we're playing against someone in the league, but these just they don't seem to be able to handle us. We've got nine shots in 20 minutes, four on target. Could this be a chance for them? No, it can't, because Bascagli covers well and plays at the Cunningham. Now it's Cyprian. Walter, who's one of the goal scorers today, to Djurjevic, another one of the goal scorers. Back to Walter. 
Forward to Juan Carlos. Looking for his second. Is he going to have a dig? He is. Oh, off the top of the bar. I thought the goalkeeper had saved it, but I was giving him a bit too much credit there. So it's half time and it's 3 0, and we've yet to let them have a shot on target. In fact, we've yet to let them have a shot on goal. Uh, so we can be very pleased. Very pleased with the performance today. Keep it going. Just looking at the newbie. How's he doing? 6.9. Not bad. Um, not the best, but he's not the worst either in the team today. Now we've got a couple of players that need a bit of match sharpness. So I do want to bring them on. We're going to bring on Mikel Lebihan for Eli Yuan. And we'll bring on John Toral a bit later on, I think. There's been a red card. I wasn't even commentating on that. Alan Pickard has been sent off for the pre-foot for a challenge which didn't really look like much, to be honest. Um, straight from that, that free kick, we've got a chance now with Kraft. Very early into the second half now. Cyprien moving forward with the ball. He's played very well today. Juan Carlos through to Libihan, the substitute, and he just smashes that over the ball. Perhaps that's to do with how sharp he is. Perhaps it's just to do with how good he is. So we're going to make our second change of the game. It's going to be Juan Carlos coming off, Jon Terrell coming on, just to try and get his match sharpness up a little bit more. He's on 78%, which isn't too bad, but it'd be nicer to see it a bit higher. Cutting him with a throw in deep in our own half, plays it to Batoni. Now it's Cyprien. And could this be a chance for us to get our fourth? I was expecting a bit, a few more goals than what we've got. But this could be a chance to get another one. Toral with the ball, the substitute in lots of space. John Toral moves forward, he shoots, and it's saved by Clavel again. He's, he's done quite well in goal, Clavel, for a goalkeeper that's conceded three goals today. Made a few saves, a few good saves. Highlight continuing with Toral. Moves that forward to Djurjevic. Nice touch, Djurjevic. Advancing on goal, Djurjevic shoots. That was just over the bar again. I thought the goalkeeper saved it, but it was just over the bar according to the, the text commentary on the bottom. Ibrahim, could this be a chance for Lepuy Foot? They still yet to have a shot on target or a shot on goal today. Cyprien plays it forward to Lebihan. And Lebihan just slowing it down to Walter. Now it's Toral to Djurjevic. Djurjevic has a dig and that's in. Excellent finish from him. His second of the game. It's an own goal, actually. Ibrahim with an own goal for Lepuy Foot. Let's take a look at the replay. So, Toral picks it up here. Plays that to Djurjevic. He just takes the ball out of his feet. And yeah, that's, that's clearly an own goal. That was heading miles wide from Djurjevic. Pretty poor shot, to be honest. Walter with the corner. And it's Batoni on his debut. He's, is that his? It is Leonardo Batoni with his first ever goal for Nice on his debut. What an amazing day for him. Incidentally, Le Puyfoot have managed to have a shot on goal, which is a bit disappointing. But nothing's going to take that away from Batoni. Ball in. Batoni first time. Volleyed, deflected again off the defender, but this time it was heading on goal anyway, so he still gets given the goal. Cunningham with a free kick. Plays it to Buscagli, the centre-back. Now it's Cyprien, moving forward, past one defender, gets tackled by another, and that's a possible counter-attacking opportunity for Le Puy Foot now. Molinier is advancing forward, but that's... Oh, he's missed the tackle. Molinier through on goal. Molinier saved by Cardinal by one hand. He just stuck his hand up. He loves making those saves. And it's a corner for Le Puy Foot, who've got us on the back foot for pretty much the first time in this game. And that corner mustn't have come to anything because the highlight just ended. Look at the number of shots we've had. We've had 35 shots. That's ridiculous. Ibrahim crosses it in. Clements there. Cardinal comes and collects that easily. And launches it upfield towards Lebihan. Lebihan knocks that on to himself. Lebihan through on goal. Mikel Lebihan. Perhaps this is why his sharpness was down, because he's not very good. Can we get one last goal? Can we make it six? Toral. Moving forward, gets tackled by Vanatou, but he's going to get the ball back again. He plays that to Cyprian. Now it's Walter. Walter advancing forward. Have a dig. Someone, shoot. Toral. Cyprian. Cyprian moving forward. Cyprian, is he going to shoot? No, he gets tackled. And then Vidal comes in, sliding in for no reason, really. And there's full time. Stad Charles Masso. It's Le Puyfoot nil. Nice, five. Remy Walter gets the man of the match award today. A 9.3 rating for him and one goal, one assist. Van Collis not far behind him with one goal and two assists. An excellent performance. And to be fair, what we expected. 
look at the number of shots 37 shots i think that's the highest number of shots i've ever had so we have completed the draw for the coupe de france 10th round and it will be fc lorient that we play and um, they are the, also the team incidentally that we play in the quarterfinal of the coupe de la league so we're going to be seeing them a lot this season so looking ahead to next episode and we will do the cup game against fc lorient the coupe de france game that is and the game in the league against Lyon, that's going to be a big game. Obviously, we are very close to each other in the table, fourth and fifth at the moment. Um, and a victory there would be very good for our Champions League chances. So we've got a few games to play offline. And then we'll be back for the FC Lorient and Lyon games. But that is it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Feel free to leave a comment below. Subscribe to my channel to get all my content when it comes out. Keep an eye out for all the daily uploads this week. And I'll see you next time.